Hey y'all, it's Adventure Brad here, and I'm working on this uh, ZXR RZX 1200 Yeet machine. Shackles sporting his uh, Carhartt jacket, which he seems to really like. And I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, carburetors. So uh, when it comes to anything with four carbs, or multiple carbs, or whatever, they have to be balanced, meaning the uh, the intake pulse between them is all the same and that way all cylinders get the same amount of fuel and aren't running behind or lean or hot or anything weird it the key to making multi-carb motor run good is besides just good service and maintenance is sinking the carburetors and like the old volkswagens that's just notorious for having to sink dual carbs and then on bikes and the gold wings and all that it just gets really fun so um i hate the little needly things because they just dance all over the place and shake but this isn't really about this, which is the most awesome tool. This is digital when it comes to doing syncing. But the way that I like to do it and get it really close is I just do it on the bench uh, to start with. So I've got my carbs all cleaned up and you kind of need to understand how it all works. So here's your main plate. Um, and I call it the main. It's the number one one that you work off of because it's the one that the uh, cables go on to. And in this case, and not always, the uh it's kind of hard to see down in there um but the the idle adjustment screws on there so the way you start is first back the idle adjustment screw all the way out so it's not interfering and you want to i i start on the, the center tube but it doesn't really matter um you want to work all the screws down till they're all even uh, you can start with the high side one first or the one that's touching first uh to it because it's the one that's grounded out and holding the rest of them open and you want to kind of bring them all down to it and the way i do it is just literally i go like this and i hold it up to the light and i'm balancing around and let's see if i can get it showing you guys here see how there's that little light gap i literally just sit here and just fiddle back and forth with it i have my own little process you have your own process for you but uh it's hard to show on camera but all these i think the one on the this guy's just a little tightly staring through the camera. You guys let me know. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you is you literally go back and forth between these and I'm gonna get it back down so the lighting's better. But, and each of these screws bounces between them. So if uh, this plate's here, this one in the center, let's see if I can get a better poking device. Poking device. So this plate here, goes down to this throttle plate and this throttle shaft, and then this yoke assembly and the two sets of springs uh, go down to this one. So if you turn this screw in, it forces this one down. So, and if you look which way the direction goes, that, that pulls to open a throttle that's resting. As you pull on it, if you screwed this in, it's gonna open this throttle and shut this one relative to each other. But if one's already bottomed out, it can't um, shut anymore. So to always work with the open one. Like I said, close the, the lowest the one that's touching off first to get these ones down in the ballpark. And then you want to keep working them down until they're all even, even Steven gap between them and light. And I like doing that even with a fancy meter like that just because things start easier. It's, it's a better, I, I hate hassling with the motor to get it fired it's noisy it's noxious and it's hard on the motor it temps all over the place and everything else like that and just makes your job a lot easier to spend a few minutes and then the thing about it is if you don't have a gauge or you're taking it to a shop and you're riding it or whatever else and you know you did your own carburetor work and somebody's going to sink it or something like that this will get you 90 percent of the way there it's not like 100 percent at all but it gets you 90 percent of the way there taking the time just to physically balance the carburetors uh, between each other um, just using good old light and you can even do something like shine a flashlight down inside for a little you know a little different view between them but yeah so there you guys go here's your little hot tip from bradley and uh i hope you guys enjoy and uh have fun be safe and yeah so i just fired this bike Digit sync says two digits are close enough, but look how close these numbers are. Uh, number one cylinder, two, three, and four. 
way more accurate than a vacuum gauge, but that's just eyeball. That's like I showed you guys. Listen to this motor just. That's, that sounds better than most guys' bikes do that have four cylinders uh, that haven't had a tune-up in a while. So, you know, you can do a pretty good dang job just eyeballing it yourself, and there, there's the numbers to show you. Um, you know, I'm gonna dial those in so they're all sit same and even, but I'm just letting her warm up here. So yeah, guys, I hope you learned something there. Venture Brad out.